bolt of lightning changed your life. Yes, ma'am. Literally. What happened? Like I said, I was working as a paramedic. I was on shift. Um, for 24 hours, we work 24 hour shifts. We get a call at, it was early in the afternoon, I remember. We were driving this, it was a beautiful, beautiful fall day. It was in October, gorgeous day, but all of a sudden this crazy storm, like the skies just went black, these thunder clouds just come in and all this lightning was going on. Big storm, torrential downpour, and it only lasted for a couple minutes and then it was just clear, super clear again. And right about then, I don't know, a couple minutes later, our tones went out and we got dispatched to a 39 year old female who was code blue, um, not breathing, not responsive, no pulse, no heartbeat from a lightning strike, cardiac arrest, lightning strike. I mean, when we heard it come over the radio, I was like, man, did I hear that right? I don't, I asked my partner, I was like, have you ever seen a lightning strike? He's like, no, this is the first. So we go buzzing up in there and it was way up in the foothills, a couple miles outside of town. So it was kind of a, a trek to get yeah, up this there. This is Idaho, right? Or in Idaho, yeah, in Boise. And so we arrive on scene. Sure enough, here's a 39-year-old female uh, laying on the side of a hill in the rain, you know, she was out hiking with her mom and her two little boys. They were looking at some property to potentially maybe build a house on. Storm comes out of nowhere. They tried to make it back to the car just to get out of the rain and bolt of lightning just gets her right in the top of the head and she goes down. I mean, they were all like knocked off of their feet and we, I was the paramedic that responded to that call. We get there, it's this crazy scene. I just, I remember seeing her boys Everybody's really shaken up. We move her to the back of our ambulance. And I pretty, I pretty much knew she wasn't gonna make it. Uh, and we were 10 minutes away, you know, and that's, I mean, that's a long time to be away and not have cardiopulmonary resuscitation, you know, breathing, airway, all that stuff, which you know. We get her in the back of the ambulance. I put IVs in her, I intubate her, I put a tube into her lungs start breathing for her. We start doing really good CPR, just driving to the hospital. Cause we'd, honestly, my thought was, well, we, we can't just leave her here on the side of the hill in front of her kids. Let's just transport her. Long story short, I ended up reviving her in the back of the ambulance on the way to the hospital. She makes a full recovery, like she recovers. She's in rehab, um, she's on a ventilator for a while. She's in a, a rehab center for a while. She eventually comes out with some, some neurologic deficits. It's hard for her to walk now, but mentally she's, she's right there and she's fine. And so we actually met, her and I met up at a, uh, like a banquet that the county, our ambulance service put on about the most noteworthy calls and you know local heroes that intervened in crazy situations. Well, we were one of those and I met her. She finds out that I'm, a local, like what I do on the side, I'm just this local musician guy who's playing coffee shops around town. The profound thing here that I love talking about is we, she and I are opposite in so many ways. And we don't share the same faith. Politically, we're probably on opposite sides of the planet, but here's this lady that just sees me for who I am. And she says, I wanna, I wanna help you. Like, what's your dream? I told her it was playing music. I'd love to help people with my music someday, somehow. I don't know what that looks like. She's like, well, how do you do that? And I said, well, I'd, I'd love to start by going into a recording studio. I've been writing songs for 12 years and I have a big batch of songs and I think I have maybe five that I think are worth recording. She sends me off, she has, she has some money sitting around. She's like, if you ever need me, I wanna be there for you. She gives me a check. Uh, this check arrives at her house from, it was a retroactive disability check. She'd never gotten anything like that in her life, but the insurance kicked out this check to her one day. She didn't have any clue why, but she just knew. She's like, oh, this is for Ryan. So she gave me that money and I went into a recording studio and recorded 
a few songs, which ultimately like that got, I sent that to a record company and got signed to a record deal. And it was just this crazy uh, whirlwind of such a transformation and a shift for not only my paramedic career, but like just our lives as a whole. My wife and I, at that moment, we had just had our first child. I was just getting signed to a record deal. And we were, it was this, this crazy whirlwind of events. That's really was the jumping the off beginning. point. Yeah. So do you ever stay in contact with her now? I do. It Regularly. She's, she's my biggest fan still. It's just taught, she has taught me so much about how we don't have to always agree to love each other, to be there for one another. Here's a lady, a person who intervened so profoundly in my life, and yet we're so opposite in so many ways. And it's just such a testimony to me how God doesn't care about that stuff. He doesn't care about all the labels and restrictions we put on, on each other. But God uses anybody and everything to accomplish his purposes. And I'm, I'm just so grateful. She, every year she texts me on the anniversary of that lightning strike and just says, thank you, love you. She comes to my concerts when we're out there um, in the Pacific Northwest. And yeah, well, she's, she's always watching from a distance and just always been such a huge support even after all these years.